all of these other altcoins are unregistered securities. They're all just equity tokens issued by a company in order to get around going public, and they're committing securities fraud. Ethereum all included. Of course. Especially Ethereum. You know, Ethereum's got $20 billion of ETH token locked up in the staking contract right now, and there's a couple of people that may or may not give it back to you ever. Now, that, isn't that the definition of investment contract? If, if a bank took $20 billion of your assets, froze the, the window, and said you can't have your money back ever, maybe in the year 2024, we're not sure, we're just going to keep it. We may actually give you interest on it. We may take it all. We may, you know, we may slash it. That's the definition of a security, right? It's an investment of money in a common enterprise, you know, relying upon the efforts of others and expectation of profit. Now the question is, what's a crypto commodity? The chair of the SEC has said the only crypto asset that's clearly a commodity is Bitcoin. The chair of the CFTC had said as of a few months ago, the only crypto assets that are commodities are Bitcoin and Ether. But Ethereum's not really a commodity. Ethereum is a security, and that has been a big fight in the community uh, below the surface. As of last Wednesday, the chair of the CFTC went to Princeton, gave a speech, and said, the only crypto asset which I deem as a commodity is Bitcoin. So now you have the CFTC and the SEC and and certain other regulators, the head of Treasury, the head of the Federal Reserve, you know, all of them, in essence, endorsing Bitcoin as a commodity and leaving us to figure out what we're going to do with the securities and the currencies that exist in the system. With always known MicroStrategy, CEO Michael Saylor was a huge Bitcoin advocate and in past interviews, he has tiptoed around giving his opinion on other cryptocurrencies, particularly Ethereum. That has all changed this week, where in his latest interviews, Saylor warns investors that Ethereum, alongside all other cryptocurrencies, are committing securities fraud and he believes the SEC should completely shut them down. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Saylor explains why outside of Bitcoin and stablecoins, the FTX collapse has exposed the entire industry and he is of the belief that it will come to a bad end for investors as regulators clamp down hard on what has been going on. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Okay, a commodity mm -hmm. is an asset without an issuer. Mm -hmm. Okay, a commodity is a much more ethical thing to promote and to trade than a security. A security is yo-yo coin or, or penny stock. I invented it. The difference between a security and a commodity is if I looked at you right now and said you know, I don't like people in Japan. I'm just going to turn off all their steel. I can't do that, right? I can't make steel not work in Japan. I can't mm -hmm. turn off electricity in Japan or turn off oranges, right? Uh, so a commodity is an asset without an issuer. No matter how much money you have of pork bellies or lumber, you cannot invalidate somebody else's lumber, OK, and that's why it's it's impossible to commit securities fraud because they're they're again, it's land. Right. Mm -hmm. If I said to you, buy land in Texas and I was yeah. wrong. OK, it's like I'm, I didn't create the land in Texas. I can't remove the land in Texas. But what if I said buy Texas coin? There's only a million Texas coins. It's going up. And then you buy Texas coin. And then I go and I give myself 10 million more unlocked Texas coin. I dump it on the market. The price goes to zero. Now, do you feel like you got cheated? Mm -hmm. you, see, you see how it's possible to cheat you with a security because I can manipulate the characteristics of the security. A security is an asset with an issuer. So if you have an asset with an issuer, like, for example, a publicly traded stock, like MicroStrategy, MSTR is an asset with an issuer. I have ethical civil obligations, right? You know, if I lie about it, I, I can't just say, I can't, I'm not even going to say what I'm going to say, right? I don't even yeah. talk about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you to buy it or not buy it. I would say, read our disclosures. There's a thousand pages of risk factors. Everybody on the board of directors, everything we've done, everything we think we're going to do, if we change our mind about what we're going to do, you're going to read it in 8K within four business days because I have an obligation to be transparent on a security. 
But on the other hand, if I say, I really think you ought to stock up on lumber in case, you know, you need to burn it this winter. I'm promoting a commodity. Maybe you stock up on lumber and you overpay for it. Maybe you stock up on lumber and you don't need it during the winter, right? Did I defraud you? I'm promoting lumber. Maybe I gave you bad advice, but the difference between promoting lumber and promoting lumber coin is I can print a hundred trillion lumber coin, you know, on Saturday night and dump it on you and drive your lumber coin to zero. I can't create a hundred trillion forest overnight by snapping my fingers. It's a natural phenomenon. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't that speak to just a bigger question about the crypto market in general? Like a lot of people will be like, yeah, I don't, you know, I can't touch it. I can't hold it. Even with NFTs, meaning real estate, I can hold it. I can touch it. Commodities, cash. These, these are tangible assets, even the stock market. However, with crypto, it's, it, it's all very digital. You can't touch it. And I feel like a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. Yeah, it, get, it gets to the fundamental point of what are those assets? Some of those assets are crypto commodities. A crypto commodity is a token without an issuer that cannot be manipulated by some CEO or corporation or other party, right? There are cryptocurrencies like Tether and Circle. They are actually tokens meant to represent the US dollar or, or some other stable asset. They have an issuer. And uh, generally, they're going to be regulated as, as uh, securities and as currencies by the banking establishment, the SEC. Then there's crypto securities, Solana, FTT, Serum. Those were all securities. They had an issuer. There were companies behind them. There were CEOs behind them. People could make more of them. People can destroy them. There are some people, insiders, that had disproportionate interest in them. Those could only be ethically sold to the general public pursuant to a full and fair disclosure, right? And this is common sense, right? If you create something and you dump it on the general population, you have an ethical obligation to tell them who made the decision, how much is there, you know, what is your background, what's going to happen next. That's what you do when you take company public. So coming, coming back to this crypto issue, you had a little war between, between the two factions and the right answer is, if you're selling a crypto security, it should be regulated by the SEC. If you have a crypto commodity, then it's not a security. Now the question is, what's a crypto commodity? The chair of the SEC has said, the only crypto asset that's clearly a commodity is Bitcoin. The chair of the CFTC had said, as of a few months ago, the only crypto assets that are commodities are Bitcoin and Ether. But Ethereum's not really a commodity. Ethereum is a security, and that has been a big fight in the community uh, below the surface. As of last Wednesday, the chair of the CFTC went to Princeton, gave a speech, and said, the only crypto asset which I deem as a commodity is Bitcoin. So now you have the CFTC and the SEC and and certain other regulators, the head of Treasury, the head of the Federal Reserve, you know, all of them, in essence, endorsing Bitcoin as a commodity and leaving us to figure out what we're going to do with the securities and the currencies that exist in the system. The thing that brought FTX crashing down is that Sam went to D.C., spent a lot of money on lobbyists, lobbied for this bill that would have made uh, both Bitcoin and Ethereum commodities and would have put the CFTC in control, would have created light regulation, would have created a path for other crypto tokens to be viewed as commodities. And in addition to like giving a lot of money to the media, a lot of money to the academics, a lot of money to the politicians, and a lot of money to the celebrities, he also inserted in the bill that, that uh, the crypto exchanges would send fees to the CFTC. And they, in essence, try to bribe the CFTC with, with crypto usage fees in order to get light regulation. That didn't go over well with a whole set of regulators that thought that that was a way to undermine the securities industry. It was at a deadlock. That's why we haven't had any uh, regulation because of this deadlock between, I think, people that know better. And uh, look, the crypto people have, they have billions of dollars of counterfeit money. Sam just, Sam alone spent billions of dollars of counterfeit stolen money. But imagine 
if everybody that was generating crypto tokens doing the same thing right now. And I'm, I'm not going to go into the, uh, into the others involved, but you can probably figure out what's going on. You have a lot of money trying to get a very light regulatory regime. Uh, why'd Sam blow up? Well, Sam went to D.C., and in addition to trying to get, you know, fairly exceptional treatment just for his exchange, he then started bad-mouthing Binance and, and uh, implying that uh, the other offshore exchanges were much shadier than his, and uh, that pissed them off. And that combined with, combined with the leak of the balance sheet. When the Alameda balance sheet leaked and it was clear that something like 10, 12 billion dollars of 14 billion in assets were air tokens backed by nothing, it became pretty clear that they were rickety. Imagine if I said I have $12 billion of air token, it trades $10 million a day. Okay, well, all you got to do is dump $100 million on the market. It's going to zero. So once they saw that, I think CZ has Is CZ the heavyweight? Is CZ the heavyweight of heavyweights, or would you put— uh, the Yeah, sure. The CEO of Binance? Yes. O okay. Offshore, right? Offshore, the most influential uh, person in the industry is CZ, but worldwide— I think the most influential person in the industry is the chair of the SEC. Yes, and, right. and the entire, yeah, Gary Gensler. And the entire industry pretty much is waiting to see what, what they, Gensler will do. And Gensler is, is pretty much the one person who could provide a playbook, uh, or a set of rules of the road that would cause this industry to move forward in an economically responsible, ethical fashion.